Today we're going over the best Warzone 2 settings to give you max visibility and the highest FPS your hardware can achieve. Gonna start this video with some honesty. While hitting at least 140 FPS is widely considered to be ideal, if you've got a medium to low-end PC, you may not be able to achieve it. Regardless of what the outright liars are promoting in their low-effort disgusting thumbnails to leech watch time and add revenue off you. My GPU is an RTX 2070 non-super and my CPU is a Ryzen 7 3700X. With my own personal settings, I get just over 100 FPS on average at 1440p, which I'd say is pretty decent for my hardware. Here are some benchmarks I stole from TechSpot where they compared Warzone's minimum quality settings on a range of GPUs for 1080p, 1440 and 4K. If you look at the bottom, you'll see that an RTX 3060 with no CPU bottleneck can't even achieve 140 FPS even at 1080p, so it's just something to consider. If you own Modern Warfare 2, you'll have access to the benchmark tool which shows the average FPS you can expect for the graphic settings that you've chosen. And you can also see if you have any CPU or GPU bottlenecks that may be responsible for your performance issues. I don't know why they didn't add this benchmark feature to Warzone 2, because there's no reason why they couldn't have. To get a general idea of the FPS you can achieve in Warzone on your PC, go into your graphic settings, click quality, then reset tab, select performance, then change the quality preset up the top to minimum. Go into interface and scroll down to the telemetry section. If you click show more, you can add an FPS counter to show in the upper left corner. Once you've done that, play a few games to get an idea of what your average FPS is. My reasoning behind getting you to do all of this is if you play a few games with everything on the lowest settings and you still aren't happy with your FPS, your hardware is obviously garbage and it's not my fault God won't throw down a new GPU for you. Try asking your parents for one. Ensure you have the latest drivers for your GPU installed and that the game is installed on your SSD. I played this on my hard disk drive and noticed micro stuttering. They vanished when I reinstalled on my SSD. After you do that, go to your graphic settings and click view. Warzone sets you up with a default of 80 for your field of view, but if you want to see more on the battlefield, I recommend raising it to 100. In the example over here, you can see the benefits immediately. If some coward was camping behind the columns, you'd be about two seconds away from being teabagged. Don't make it higher than 100 though, because if it's too high, enemies in the distance will be harder to see. My monitor is 27 inches, so this value works well for me. If yours is smaller, maybe try 90 instead. It says here raising the field of view may cause lower frame rate and graphical artifacts, but we aren't raising it by much, so neither of these things will be a problem. The tiny compromise to FPS is worth it because you'll no longer have tunnel vision. Click on display. If you want the best performance, choose full screen exclusive or full screen borderless. I prefer full screen borderless because then I can alt tab out of the game while it continues to run on the screen in the background. There are some people out there who still think full screen borderless isn't on par with full screen exclusive in terms of performance, but their information is severely outdated because you won't lose any performance if you select borderless mode. Those who think you will, try Try running them both in that benchmark tool available in Modern Warfare 2 a few times each and prove it. Choose your monitor with the highest refresh rate under display monitor. Same goes if you have multiple GPUs. Choose your best one here if it hasn't already selected it. If you chose borderless as your display mode, your screen refresh rate will be locked to auto, which should have selected your highest refresh rate by default. When FPS is higher than your monitor's refresh rate, screen tearing will occur, which is very disorienting. If this happens, you may be tempted to turn on these VSync settings down here, but if you do, it will add input lag, which is the last thing you want if you're playing competitively. So keep both of these vSync options off. Display resolution will also be locked if you chose full screen borderless. There's no need to worry about this or dynamic resolution because we're going to go over the upscale and sharpening settings in the quality section later. Aspect ratio should already be set to automatic. For custom frame rate limit, choose unlimited. If you're noticing your frame rate is choppy, select custom, show more, and then set the number to your monitor's native refresh rate and see if this fixes it. And just in case you're wondering, custom frame rate limit will not add input lag because it's simply capping your frame rate Whereas the way VSync works is it'll display the next frame when it's ready at the start of your monitor's refresh cycle, which causes the input lag. If you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor and cap your FPS to your monitor's native refresh rate, you shouldn't experience any screen tearing if your FPS isn't higher than your refresh rate, because these monitors are made to synchronize their refresh rates with your GPU and reduce input lag. The only slider that matters here is the gameplay one. Set the menu custom frame rate to whatever you like. Out of focus custom frame rate frees up your GPU's resources allocated to the game by reducing the frame rate, which only happens when you alt tab out of it. 30 is a good number to keep it at. If you've been playing Warzone for a while and you're starting to notice stutters or graphical artifacts, this might be due to corrupted shaders. If this ever happens to you, click restart shaders optimization and then restart Warzone. When you reopen it, you'll see it recompiling and optimizing the shaders with a progress bar in the corner. If your progress bar hangs just before it reaches 100%, just restart the game. If you notice some micro stuttering in the first few games after clicking restart shaders optimization, it's probably still sorting them out, so just be patient. 
animation. For display gamma, if you're playing on a monitor, select 2.2. If you're playing on a TV, select 2.4. Brightness will increase your visibility in darker areas. I've raised mine to 60, so the picture in the middle is showing a little more. I find this to be a pretty good value. That's all you need to do on this page. So click apply settings and then click quality. If you haven't done so already, click reset tab down here and change the quality preset to minimum. Some people would think this is all we need to do to maximize FPS, but it's not. There are still some very important settings we need to manually change that will improve FPS, visibility, and input latency that this preset doesn't manage at all. The most important setting in this whole area is the upscaling sharpening preset section because you can easily use this to get a significant FPS boost in your games. Each one has a different effect on image quality and FPS. The main two here are Nvidia's DLSS, which can only be used if you have an RTX GPU, or AMD's FSR 2.1. And unlike Nvidia's preset, it doesn't care what GPU you have. It'll work on any. If you have an Nvidia RTX GPU and you only care about FPS, select DLSS because this is guaranteed to give you the highest gains over the rest of the options here. If you're on any other GPU, FSR 2.1 is your go-to, but regardless of which option you choose, make sure you select the performance setting. You could have it upscale from an even lower resolution by selecting Ultra Performance for slightly higher FPS, but I'm personally okay with performance since I'm hitting 100 FPS on average. If you're curious about what the image quality looks like for quality, balance, and performance for DLSS and FSR, I'm leaving a link in the description where you can compare all the different options available. Just scroll down, select your native resolution, maximize the screen, and start comparing. As you can see in the comparisons, performance really is the best option to use for higher FPS in either DLSS or FSR scenario. You can also use your mouse wheel to scroll into different areas around the picture to notice finer differences in detail. Personally, I have FSR 2.1 setup even though I have an RTX, because in my opinion, it does a better job at sharpening objects in the distance, which helps with enemy visibility, but it's your call. So let's quickly go through the rest of the settings. Turn off persistent damage layers because this affects VRAM. On-demand texture streaming impacts your CPU and also takes up space in your hard dick drive. Two good reasons to turn this garbage off. Setting streaming quality to low frees up 200 meg VRAM. Set water quality to water caustics because there's less strain in the GPU if you do this. Set spot cache to low to free up more VRAM. Turn weather grid volumes off. Nvidia Reflex Low Latency. Its purpose is to reduce your system latency to make everything feel more responsive. My advice is try On Plus Boost first, as this can reduce your latency more than just the On setting. On Plus Boost will rely more on the GPU to reduce latency, which reduces the resources needed from your CPU. If you have a weak CPU or it's bottlenecking your performance, On Plus Boost makes a lot of sense. If, on the other hand, your GPU is the weaker link, select On so resources can be shared more equally between the GPU and CPU. Weapon Motion Blur affects your GPU. So Turn this completely useless setting off. The purpose of film grain is to make everything look cinematic. This works in story based games, not competitive games, because it'll make everything look less clear. Don't forget to click apply, then restart the game so the new settings take effect. I don't know if it's just me, but I've noticed whenever I change graphic settings in Warzone, I usually have to play a few matches before everything turns butter smooth again. Probably something to do with the shaders re optimizing after the changes. If you followed everything in this tutorial and you still can't get kills, you can't blame it on your settings anymore. You probably just suck. Even so, I hope you have a good one today.